Today, I've got some last minute gift ideas that they're gonna love. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So I'm gonna start out on my Cricut. And you can just see here, excuse the condition of the footage here, but I just wanna let you know that I'm going into my Cricut settings here. I'm going to choose what I wanna use, and I got this from Creative Fabrica. They have so many gorgeous things to use. Um, but yeah, I love this one from Creative Fabrica. We're gonna take this, size it down to where I need it. And then we'll be able to cut this out. I'm just gonna make it on vinyl. It's just gonna go, it's not gonna be heat press. It's just gonna be regular vinyl for an item that I am going to be making. These are all gift ideas that don't take a lot of time. They don't take a lot of skill. And certainly if you don't have a Cricut, you can go ahead and do something like a, a transfer with some carbon paper. You can go to Pinterest. I have lots of free printables over there and uh, choose something and then, you know, write on the back of the paper with some chalk and then trace over it, whatever process you want to use. If you choose something simple, you can even just use like um, stickers. But this is a different one here. I'm just showing you just as an example. And we're gonna peel this off. So today these gift ideas are for people young and old. I am making gifts today for nieces and nephews as young as two. And for my mother who is, I won't give her age, but I will say she's just under 70. So lots of gift ideas here for everybody in the family and for your friends and wherever else you feel like you need to give a gift. So once you've weeded it all out, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to use some transfer tape. I'm still learning on my Cricut. Uh, I know you're supposed to cut your tape down smaller so that it fits the surface, but for now it's okay. I really wanted to get these out for you guys. Um, I'm, like I said, still learning, so give me some grace here. But I want to get these out because I know there are so many people who are doing last-minute things, uh, like I am, apparently. So when Creative Fabrica reached out to me to ask if I would collaborate with them, I thought, you know, this is perfect because it's going to help me get all the tools that I need, and I can no longer just let my machine sit over there and collect dust. Um, they have over 3 million fonts, graphics, and crafting resources. They partner with Silhouette, but you know, cutting machine is a cutting machine. It really doesn't matter. You can use this with any cutting machine that you have. You can also, if you don't want to pay, you know, for like a monthly fee, which is what they do offer is um, monthly fees um, or memberships. So you can also get things free and they have lots of free things that are really, really cute over there. Not everything you see in this video is Creative Fabrica. You know, there are other things in here that are fonts that I have just collected as I've been going, but I really like the options because there's so many different choices and that makes it great. So I'm just using my little Cricut tool here to press down my, my wording and then I'm just going to peel it up. I'm also practicing around with a bunch of different, um, transfer tapes or papers I've had some bad mess ups and uh, yeah so I'm just trying you'll see me in this video using several different kinds anyway I thought that the same was really cute for my daughter and these little Halloween color changing tumblers you can get them at Walmart and they also have them uh, for different holidays and they are so nice when you put ice water or ice drink in there they change colors and it's so cool my daughter loves this color so I'm just going to stuff this with some of her candy and some paper shreds. And she is a nursing student and she will be graduating this spring slash summer. So we're all excited about that. And I thought something like this would be appropriate for her because you just don't ever know. You don't know what kind of mood you're going to get her in depending on the day and how much studying she had to do and how much food she actually got to eat. Okay, so another option with the color changing cups is going to be for children. So these are for my niece and nephews, my grand niece and nephews, or great niece and nephews. So I went ahead and made the two boys the snowman, and the little girl is going to get my little snow fairy. I'm going to stuff the bottoms with a little bit of that same shred. 
And you can see I'm using white paper on all these, so it makes, or white, white vinyl, so everything is the same. Everything can fit on the same one sheet of vinyl. These are just marshmallows that are chocolate covered with some peanuts on them on a stick. And I got those from Walmart, and they were just a few dollars. I'm going to put those on the inside and then stuff the paper shreds on top. And we'll put their little straw and lids back down in there. This stuff can be such a mess. I'm sure their parents will appreciate the mess. So that's how it's going to look. And we're going to add one more thing to it because, you know, little kids, you got to give them a little something fun, right? Not just something edible and color changing, but we're going to give them something that really stimulates their senses. So there we go. Jingle bells. These are giant bells that I took off of a thrifted wreath. Cleaned them up really nicely. I'm going to take some of this wired tinsel, thread a link through there. It's probably maybe eight inches. And then I'm going to twist it really, really tight. And then now we have a shaker. Then when they get that out, they can just shake that, drive their parents absolutely nuts, but they're going to love it. You know you got to go outside and ring the Christmas bell, of course. So I'm going to do that for each one because they're little and you don't want anybody to feel left out. All right, on to the next one. We're gonna use this Dollar Tree Christmas tree sign and we're gonna give it a good coat of green paint. We're gonna take all of our stickers and hangers and things off of here. You can use whatever color you want. I just have the paint that I get from, um, from Plaid. They send me all kinds of goodies. I am an ambassador. So I get to try new things, and I'm just going to paint this tree. I'm not trying to get a necessary uh, solid thick coverage here. I want to be sure that you can see some of the brush marks in there. So it looks, you know, a little bit like it's hand painted. It's rustic. That's how I do it. So you can see me going kind of sideways and upward just to give it some brush strokes. Be sure you get around your edges too. You can paint the back if you would like. I'm going to take a couple of different types of trim, and then here is the original transfer that I made in the beginning that you saw me making. I run on coffee and Christmas cheer. Ain't it the truth? Okay, so we're going to put this down here, and I'm kind of eyeballing it, and I'm going to decide where I want it on my tree, because I know that on the upper part, I want to make a bow, so I'm going to make sure that the the uh, sticker part down here is close enough that it won't be covered up by a bow. So I'm just going to slide it down a little bit. No big deal because I haven't burnished it yet. And now I'm going to take my tool. And this is a little, um, I think I called it my Cricut tool before, but it, it's actually not by Cricut. I got it from Dollar Tree. And this is where I noticed that my gingerbread man has no eyeballs. Not a problem, we're going to fix that. I'm going to show you what to do if you are missing a dot on your eye or an eyebrow or an eyeball. I'll show you what to do. So we're going to peel off this. I'm just keeping it nice and flat when I peel it off so that nothing pops up. I have a chalk paint writer or a marker, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to make him some eyes. Now look at that. You can't even tell. Now this is from Amazon. My husband ordered me a couple of trims and I thought I would go ahead and use it. It reminds me of gingerbread or like a little gingerbread house. So I'm going to kind of go with that on this green tree. We're going to just kind of make this look like a big old cookie. I'm going to cut this into pieces and then cover the trunk of that tree. I'm just kind of squishing it up so I can get one more piece on the bottom. And push it up into that line above it and then flip it over and get that back pressed down. I'm going to give it just a minute because if you have a bulky type of trim or ribbon it'll try to pull up and flatten back out. So I'm just going to let that dry and then the bottom part down here just going to trim it up. We want it to look nice. Remember if you're giving something as a gift you want it to be finished and you want it to look like you put some effort into it, right? So we're going to go all around the edge of that tree. 
I'm just trying to follow the curves a little bit in the tree. And then I'm going to tuck it under here and then continue around the tree. And the good thing about um, trim, a lot of trims I've worked with, is that you can fold them over on themselves. So you can change the direction, just like this. Do you see what I did there with my finger? Just fold it over on itself. And it looks absolutely fine. If not, and you don't like that, you can always cut it off, but it's probably going to be a booger to get those angles right. But you do what works for you. So continuing around, I just turn it, add some glue, and press it down. Now Dollar Tree has trim from time to time. I know you can get trim at places like Dollar General. I think Family Dollar. I don't go there that much, so I'm not sure. You can certainly get it at Walmart. Uh, you can get it at the thrift store, or you can go to Amazon and order it. If you are interested in this type, um, let me know in the comment section, and I will... Uh, ask my husband for the link and then I will give you the link for this because I am not entirely sure I know that it came in a pack of six or eight I think but they're perfect because they're all this brown color this really natural jute looking stuff and so I went around with my white right on top of that just followed right to the outside row and I'm gonna do this also on the trunk and doesn't that look like a cookie that is so cute so I'll flip it over and just glue those pieces down on the back. Okay, so this is a small sign, right? You could put this in a wreath if you would like to give a bigger gift. Or, you know, this is a really good size for a dorm room. If you have a college student, it is perfect for the nursing home. If you have a nursing home residents who are special to you in your life, they would love something like this. Or maybe even consider making some small things like this and donating to the nursing home. A lot of those sweet people don't have anyone visit them for the holidays, and this would be such a great way to bring a smile to their faces. Really something simple, and it's not going to cost you a lot of money. Okay, so moving on to the bow. You've seen me make this bow before. You see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going to pinch that up and put it in a clip while I work on another piece to go right on top. So the one underneath I got from Dollar Tree and this one also came from Dollar Tree. And I'm just dovetailing them because you know you want to finish your ends. I have made them originally the same size but I will trim this one down in just a moment and you'll see that. Same type of bow. You can see what I'm doing. Just kind of walking my fingers just like that to the center. And then we're going to grab that clipped bow, put it on top, remove our clip, and then add a piece of jute string and tie it right up in the middle. You can use whatever colors, whatever you have that coordinates with what you choose. So maybe you don't do the Christmas tree. Maybe you decide to do the Santa instead or the gingerbread man instead. Match whatever ribbon you would like to go with that and just put that on the top. The bow on the bottom, uh, I think, has wire in it, but the one on top doesn't. But that doesn't matter because when you make a small bow like this, it's you really don't need it. It'll pretty much hold its form. It's a simple, not complicated, quick bow to do. And it's cute, right? It's a pretty little bow. So see, that's exactly the same size, and that colored one is going completely over my little lace trim. So I'm just going to need to trim that down just a little bit so I can still see my lace underneath there. And that's easy to do. You do the same process dovetailing when it's already together as you did when you just had the strips before you assembled your bow. Easy, easy. I hope y'all are getting everything finished up for the holidays, that you're feeling that holiday cheer, that you've got some Christmas carols in the background and you're eating some candy and taking care of yourselves and just loving on one another. time for Christmas joy. Okay, 
So you're going to have to hold that down for a minute because that's a bulky bow and it does try to pop up off of there. So hold it down for a minute or if you have a clamp, just go ahead and clamp it. I like to take that opportunity to go ahead and fluff everything out, move things around like I need it. Then I'm going to add a little pine cone right in the middle. Just a little something extra. To finish it off, you can use a just a hanger on the back and glue it to the back. But if you want to give it as a gift, I'll show you another option. I use this type of hanger a lot. Just using some jute, tying a knot in the end, and hot gluing it up there toward the top. I do it just underneath where it would show so that you don't see the hanger. You can take some craft paper from Dollar Tree, put that behind it, trim it out. And this part doesn't have to be neat. Then use some hot glue or spray adhesive and then put your paper down right on there and then trim it off. And then you'll have a nice finished paper backing. And this is how this one was going to look. That was easy enough, wasn't it? Okay. So now I have my next sticker here. I, I know you can't see it, but that is another snowman. And this is just a little round that comes in a two pack from the craft store. I think this one probably came from Hobby Lobby. I have got my little snowman here and I am peeling off my backing and weeding him out. I love snowman. They're so cute. And you can use them into Christmas I mean, and into winter after Christmas. So here you can see I'm using a different type of paper and I've just, or transfer paper, and I've just trimmed it down. I heard good things about using like a thick masking tape, so that's what I'm doing here. And I actually found it at the thrift store. Burnishing the heck out of it. So let's see how that does. Oh, look at there. So far, so good. Peeling them slowly off. And then you just press it back down. If you have a piece that's not sticking like it should be, just lay the tape back down, rub it a little bit more, and then it will come off. You can see that's what I'm doing here with my fingernail, just to make sure I don't tear anything. And look, all of his buttons are still on. Look. Perfect. Just take your time with this part, especially if you're still kind of a newbie like me. We're just going to be slow and easy. Now you can see my little snowman. Isn't he precious? He's just like one of them that is all in the cup. So you're going to put him down and then burnish it. I just have been using this little, um, I think it's a Mod Podge squeegee thingy. And it works really good for um, burnishing as well, I feel. Especially on things with a rounded surface. All right, I just want to make sure that he sticks on there because the surface is a little bit textured almost like a canvas, and I want to be sure that it sticks down. Will it stick? Let's see. What do we think about the masking tape? Oh, yeah. I think that looks nice. Everything is still there. Look, the buttons and everything are still on there. That is perfect. Perfect. All right, so now this is some leftover ribbon that I had from last year. If you watched my Christmas videos from 2020, then you have seen this before. I'm going to use this scrap to make a little bow tie bow, just like that. It is wired and so is the thinner ribbon. I'm going to take this one and just fold it over on itself again and again at about five inch lengths. Maybe, maybe six inch. I think I do fold it one more time. Yeah, there it is. And then I'm going to put them together. I'm going to use a little bit of this red jute or cording, whatever you want to use is fine. I found this, this type of um, colored cording or jute, whatever you want to call it, is a lot stronger than the brown natural jute. So you can kind of tug on it a little bit more, unless I just got a really good bundle. It seems to work really well. So I'm going to trim off what we don't need because we're going to glue it down. We don't have to tie it. And then I'm going to fluff out the bottom first. Just going to pull those out and they stand out nicely. And that ribbon came from Dollar General, by the way. 
in 2020. Very nice. All right. This will fit nicely on the top. I'm just cutting off a little wire that I noticed was poking out. And we're going to take some greenery and put right underneath it. And this particular greenery is just some leftovers that I had. And I'm going to wrap them up with a little a little tie here. I think it's like a looks like a bread tie. Probably came off of something that I crafted with. And I'm going to add a good bit of glue and press it down in the middle. And hold it there for a couple of minutes. You want it to dry. And I'm going to put glue right on top of it and under it. Put the bow on and clamp it. Now this way, I don't have to sit there and hold it the whole time. I can actually remove this, the little glue webs. I can fluff the bow out nicely. It just gives me an extra hand. Now this is just a pipe cleaner. And we're just going to twist the bottom of it. Make a loop and twist the bottom. And this will make the perfect hanger for that piece. Again, it's a small, like a mini round. So this would work really good on small doors, in rooms, in dorms. It would work great in nursing homes. Um, you know, places like that. Really small places. Even maybe hanging off a kitchen cabinet. I'm going to add a little snowflake right in the center. And then if you would like, you can add little snowflake stickers or ornaments. Whatever you choose. So here is mine. I need to dust it off. It looks kind of grungy. Okay, now this bad boy is going to be a hit, let me tell you. This came from Amazon, this big old jar. You can see the measurements here. And I got it many, many years ago. It has moved to a couple of houses with me. Uh, it's been in a box the whole time. I used the other two jars and didn't have a use for this one. But I knew that I would one day, and this is the perfect thing. So it's been in a jar. It's fairly clean, but still before you use your Cricut or, you know, want to put a transfer of any type, you've got to get all the oils and residue off. So I'm just using some alcohol and paper towels and cleaning all of the surfaces with that. And I do the inside of that jar as well. Now, this is going to be for my mother, and she has a sweet tooth. If you have a diabetic in your family, I don't recommend that you try this particular gift for them because it's not going to be a good idea. But this is going to be so funny to her, and it's some of her favorite things ever, and she stays up late at night. That's just how she does. She always has, and uh, I think she's really going to enjoy this. So I've printed off something special for her. She's got lots of grandbabies, and she has some great grandbabies. If she's watching this video, I love you, Mama, and we love you, Granny. So we're going to weed it and then put our transfer paper down. And then I'm just going to burnish it. You know, you got to do that. You got to make it stick to that paper. So I'm really pressing down on there. Smoothing it down, and then I'll start peeling it up. Now, because this is kind of intricate, it's got kind of little thin lines and stuff. I've got my little picker there in case I need to help lift it off. Then I'm going to take it, place it where I want it on my jar, kind of fold it in half, and then lay it down. Just like that. You can measure it, make sure you have it where you want it. Um, I'm not trying to be too precise, just as close as I can eyeball it. I think I did pretty good on here. And then again with that little squeegee thing, I'm... It's kind of flexible, so it works good on curves, and I'm just kind of fixing it onto the rounded surface of this jar, and then peeling this off, and I think it looks good. I did have one little mishap with the G um, earlier, but, you know, it happens, and thankfully, uh, my mother doesn't care about that kind of stuff. I think it looks good. I think she'll look past the most loved granny into the jar at the goodies. So this is what it looks like if you wanted to give it empty, but nobody wants to get an empty jar. Oh look, I have a cameo. This is my daughter. She is eight, and she made a, a gift too while I was crafting. Look how sweet. She had me make the little, she chose the face. I made it for her. She did all the decorating herself. Isn't she a sweetheart? She wanted to show y'all. Could y'all give her a thumbs up? 
Oh, she's such a good little crafter. All right, now to the fun part. We're going to take this jar. We're going to put some paper shreds in there. It just looks fancy to have paper shreds, but you could use tissue paper. You could use um, whatever you want to use. And then now look at these goodies. So we got some honey buns. And I'll put those in the bottom. They're little mini honey buns. We've got some peanut butter cookies, some powdered donuts. I'm just going to layer these in there for her. You could do this for a college kid too. They would absolutely love this. And, you know, an alternative, you could put healthy snacks in there. You could put granola bars in there. You could do beef beef sticks. You know, if you've got somebody on keto, you could do cheeses and, and meat sticks and, and uh, no sugar options. You know, whatever you want to do. But these are her favorites, so this is what she's getting. Look at that. She is going to love this. All right, so now it's time to embellish it. I'm going to take some decorative trim. I know that you can get this any place that you find sewing materials, but I got it at the thrift store. You know my story. I'm going to go around it and then just see how much I need. This is stretchy, so I'm going to see how much I need and then cut off what's left. I'll add in my hot glue right in that little crack. It is time for our 9,000 subscriber giveaway. Yes, and this is going to be so easy. All I need for you to do is just comment down below what is your favorite Christmas candy or cookie. I would love to hear. It is time for me to start making it and I need some ideas. So I would love to hear what your favorite candy or cookie is for Christmas. And then, of course, I need you to look in the description box for the rest of the rules. Okay? Good luck. All right. So this is cute so far, right? Really pretty, very country looking. But I have some matching gross grain, gross grain, whatever you call it, ribbon. It's just some thin ribbon that is um, gingham. It matches the trim, so I'm going to use it to add a little something extra. And it's going to help be a tie for some greenery as well. So I'm just going to go right in between, sandwich it in between those two layers of ruffles. And then tie it off. Simple, simple. And we're going to make a little bow in here. You can use whatever colors you want to use. If you want to do farmhouse instead of country, you can certainly do some neutrals. You could do black. You could do black and white on your ribbon and your trim. You could do black font. You could do whatever you want to do on this. Whatever that person's favorite color is. My mother's favorite color happens to be red, so it makes it perfect for this Christmas gift. You can stop here with just a bow on the side. You can put a tag on there if you would like, but I'm gonna add some greenery. And I think that this beautiful piece of leftover icy branch is gonna work for us. But the red berries don't match. These red berries do match. And they came in a pack from, I think, the Dollar Tree. Maybe Dollar General, not really sure because the person who donated so many crafting supplies to my channel sent these. But they look great, right? They look frosted and kind of, they kind of match the theme that's going on with the branch. So we're going to tuck it on the inside. Just tucked it right behind the tie. And then I'm going to tie the bow right across it to make sure that it stays in place. Oh yeah, she's a beauty. Isn't that gorgeous? My mom's going to love this. She is going to love it. All right, y'all, so here is our final look at all of our things that we made. So from ages two to 100, there you go. Look at all these goodies. Remember to be entered in a chance to win the 9,000 subscriber giveaway box full of goodies from Dollar Tree, etc. You need to comment what is your favorite Christmas candy or cookie in the comment section. And the official rules about where you need to be located and such will be in the description box below. Try to keep in mind when you're giving a gift to somebody that you love, it is the thought that counts. Please don't go broke at the holiday season trying to buy things and get frustrated because you don't know what they're really gonna love. It's gonna come from your heart and that's what matters. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.